In this video, we will discuss the indications and contraindications for placement of a Blakemore tube, demonstrate the proper insertion of the tube, and lastly, provide some recommendations for maintenance and removal of the tube. A Blakemore tube is a flexible tube which can be inserted into the esophagus as a temporizing measure to control upper gastrointestinal hemorrhage from gastric or esophageal varices. The tube consists of two balloons which can be inflated to compress the gastroesophageal junction and the esophagus to reduce blood flow to the bleeding varices. The Blakemore tube should only be utilized in emergency situations in which it is impossible to control the bleeding with other measures such as with endoscopy or while awaiting embolization or TIPS procedure. Contraindications to the procedure include esophageal stricture, recent surgery involving the gastroesophageal junction, or if the bleeding stops or slows. A typical Blakemore tube that you may already be familiar with is the Sangstaken Blakemore tube. There are three ports on the tube, gastric aspiration port, gastric balloon port, and esophageal balloon port. Another common tube type is the Lintus Nacklace tube. This tube lacks an esophageal balloon port. It can be utilized the same way as a Blakemore tube, however, may not adequately control the hemorrhage if bleeding is not reduced by inflating the gastric balloon. The third tube is called the Minnesota tube. This tube is almost identical to the Blakemore tube, however it also has an esophageal aspiration port. The benefit to using the Minnesota tube is that you can attach the esophageal aspiration port to suction to assess for continued bleeding. Complications can be potentially lethal and include airway or large vessel obstruction or esophageal rupture. There is also a possibility of aspiration pneumonia and esophageal ulceration. Prior to starting the procedure, it is recommended that the patient be intubated and sedated if necessary. Listed here are the Blakemore kit supplies we recommend carrying. You may pause the video to note the list. We recommend having a dedicated kit for the Blakemore setup as shown. Start by setting up two three-way stop cocks with an occlusive cap, a neutral displacement connector, and a single-sided Christmas tree with lure lock. Attach the two three-way stop cock assemblies to both the esophageal and gastric balloon ports of the Blakemore tube. Then attach a double-sided Christmas tree to the gastric aspiration port with the final setup as shown. Next, ensure the patency of the gastric balloon. With the stopcock pointing towards the occlusive cap, insert about 50 cc of air into the gastric balloon. Observe the gastric balloon as it inflates in cold water, making sure that there are no bubbles to ensure its patency. Then deflate the balloon. Repeat the same steps with the esophageal balloon. With the balloons deflated, apply a generous amount of lubricant along the length of the tube. Ensure the patient is intubated and adequately sedated in order to facilitate insertion of the tube. Elevate the head of bed about 45 degrees and have a portable x-ray at bedside. Next, insert the Blakemore tube by gently guiding it into the posterior pharynx with your fingers. Advance until you reach a minimum of 50 centimeters along the marking of the tube. If you have trouble inserting the tube, you can try soaking it in ice water to stiffen it. Next, insert 50 cc of air into the gastric balloon port. Ensure the stopcock is pointing towards the occlusive cap prior to injecting. Then turn the stopcock back towards the patient when you are finished injecting. Once you've injected the air, take an upper abdominal x-ray to ensure the gastric balloon is within the gastric lumen. It is vitally important to make sure the tube has passed through the esophagus and not in the airway. If you do not see the lucency of the gastric balloon in the stomach as shown here, deflate the balloon and advance the tube further. Add another 50 cc of air into the balloon and repeat an abdominal x-ray to confirm the placement. Once you have confirmed placement, add another 200 cc of air into the gastric balloon, ensuring to turn the stopcock off towards the patient after injecting the air. Take another abdominal x-ray. This is what it will look like after injecting a total of 250 cc of air into the gastric balloon. Next, apply stable traction to the Blakemore tube until you meet resistance, which is where the gastric balloon is resting against the gastroesophageal junction. This is demonstrated here against the mannequin. A strip of gauze bandage roll is tied in slipknot fashion with the Blakemore tube at one end, and at the other end, a 500 cc to 1 liter fluid bag. 
fluid bag is hung over an IV pole to maintain traction. Attach a cuff flater endotracheal tube inflator and manometer to the esophageal port via the Nutra displacement connector. Squeeze the pump until you reach a marking between 48 to 61 centimeters of water. This marking may be between 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury on some manometers. Take another upper abdominal x-ray to ensure the esophageal balloon is inflated in addition to the gastric balloon. We have found it helpful to attach a second gliding tube shuttle piece from the endotracheal tube fastener kit onto the endotracheal fastener rail. We take the endotracheal tube, detach it from its old shuttle, and attach it to a new one we just placed. We then attach the Blake moor to the shuttle previously holding the endotracheal tube, such that it is on the patient's right. We have found that this allows for better securement of the Blakemore tube. Mark the tube at the patient's lip to monitor for migration. Finally, remove the bandaged gauze extraction from the IV hanging pole and from the Blakemore. The decision to inflate the esophageal balloon is based on the presumed site of bleeding and whether the bleeding was controlled after the inflation of the gastric balloon. Prior to inflating the esophageal balloon, ensure the gastric balloon is inflated and the device is appropriately positioned. If the site of bleeding is known to be gastric, you may elect to leave the esophageal balloon deflated. Also of note, the balloon should not be inflated for more than 24 hours as this can lead to mucosal necrosis. Attach the gastric aspiration port to low intermittent suction to monitor for continued bleeding. Nursing should verify the position of the tube is within 3 cm of the marking at the patient's lip and check the pressure inside the esophageal balloon every hour. It is important to flush the gastric aspiration port with 50 cc of normal saline every hour to make sure the port does not become obstructed with clotted blood. The esophageal balloon should be deflated every 6 hours for a period of 15 minutes to reduce the risk of esophageal necrosis. If re-bleeding occurs, the esophageal balloon should be immediately reinflated using a manometer. If you do not have an endotracheal tube shuttle, you may keep the tube secured via traction utilizing an IV pole and fluid bag. Another option is to place a football helmet with face mask onto the patient and secure the tube to the face mask. Whichever technique you use to secure the tube, it is critical the tube's position be monitored hourly. The Blakemore tube is a tool to buy you time to arrange definite therapy to control the bleeding. Do not remove the Blakemore tube until the bleeding has been controlled, endoscopy is immediately planned, or definite therapy to control the bleeding such as with a TIPS procedure or an embolization has been performed. Deflation of the esophageal balloon should be performed in stages to allow for assessment of re-bleeding. Never deflate the gastric balloon while the esophageal balloon is still inflated. Unclamp the esophageal balloon port and aspirate the air. Observe for signs of bleeding for 4 hours. If bleeding recurs, you may reinflate the esophageal balloon as previously described. Remove the traction from the tube and secure the tube to the nose using tape. Next, unclamp the gastric balloon port and aspirate the air with a syringe. Observe for signs of bleeding over 4 hours. If bleeding recurs, you may reinflate the gastric balloon as previously described. Notably, the location of the gastric balloon must be verified with x-ray prior to fully inflating the balloon. Disconnect the gastric aspiration port from suction. Using a syringe, aspirate any remaining air from the gastric and esophageal balloons. Close the balloon pores prior to removing the syringe. If you are unable to aspirate the air from the balloons, you can cut the Blakemore tube with scissors. Finally, when ready, remove the Blakemore tube with gentle traction. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that you find it helpful should you find yourself in a situation necessitating placement of the Blakemore tube.